Welcome to Outside Sales Talk, where we meet with industry experts to learn the strategies and tactics that make them successful. I'm your host, Steve Benson, and I've helped thousands of salespeople all over the world crush their quota. Today, I'll help you crush yours. Welcome back to Outside Sales Talk. Today, we have Chris Spurvey with us, and we're going to talk about how to break out of a sales slump. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks, Steve. I'm really grateful for you inviting me. This is, uh, been looking forward to this all week. Fantastic. Well, uh, just by way of introduction, Chris is an entrepreneur, a keynote speaker, and the host of the It's Time to Sell podcast. He's also an author of the best-selling business book, It's Time to Sell, Cultivating the Sales Mindset. Really excited to uh, get your take on uh, on these topics today. Here, Chris, uh, sales slumps get uh, you know everybody gets into them at some point in their sales career, and uh, and, it, and it's obviously painful when that happens. So it's going to be excited to get your take on how to get out of it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm, I'm really I'm, uh, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. The idea of uh, you know that we we everything is about mindset at, at its foundational level, and uh, let's see how we can di- dissect this topic. Awesome. So, well, to start with, let's let's get some definitions down. What is a sales slump, and and how can a sales slump start? Yeah, well, it's a great question. I mean, a sales slump, from my vantage point, is when you are out there. Uh, do, thinking you're doing the necessary steps to close deals and, and keep momentum going. Uh, but you're getting a series of roadblocks and no's and you're actually beating yourself up in the process. Uh, and so what it, that ends up leading to is a self-fulfilling uh, kind of prophecy where you, you get yourself stuck in a, uh, a true slump, right? And uh, if you go to bed at night, really uh, totally consumed with this idea that you're in a slump. Uh, maybe you don't define it as a slump, uh, but you're struggling to break, break out and you see success and uh, achieving your objectives in sales uh, as being something you're, you're desiring to do, uh, but you're not presently doing it. And so therefore you're in a slump and, you, and you know, you, the energy around a slump is obviously not something that anyone wants to be a part of. And so it becomes this self-fulfilling, uh, you know, prophecy and, and process, uh, and you just struggle to get out of it, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that can really ruin a sales representative's a day. It can ruin their month. It can ruin their year. And ultimately, uh, it can ruin a career because you really struggle to get out of it and you decide then sales is not for you mm-hmm. uh, and you move on to something else, right? So as you can see, yeah. it can be really, really uh, a dead end. Absolutely. Um, and I've, and I've seen that before. Um, how, how do you get out of it? How do you, how do you get out of a sales slump? How do you avoid giving up when you're in a sales slump? Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe one thing to say, uh, is I would suggest that anyone listening, uh, who is thinking about giving up, uh, you know, I would suggest anyone listening to take a very objective view to that. And I would suggest that no one give up uh, if if you are deciding to give up, well, decide that, but refuse to go out uh, on a low. Uh, re- only go out on a high because if you go out on a low, you've been defeated. But find a way to go out on a high. If you de- have determined sales is not necessarily for you, go out on a high because then you leave uh, the profession at least thinking good about yourself and you can take that positive momentum into a new career uh, which is perfectly fine. I mean, uh, you know, uh, but what I have learned about all of this stuff is that really uh, a sales slump is a, is a reflection of a series of events uh, that it's all about a rea- how we react, okay? And how we react is typically a result of certain life experiences outside of sales. Uh, you know, it may be childhood experiences, certain things that you were told as you were growing up about yourself and therefore we react to certain circumstances in the sales process uh, which leads to ultimately the no right we either attract or we repel certain things into uh, our sales process and the results that we're getting from our clients and so on and so I believe we need to go to work on ourselves 
as a means to get out of a sales slump. And so if you want, I can certainly share that formula with you and, and perhaps we'll get into it as we move along. But I suggest that anyone listening, if they're in a sales slump, they're feeling defeated, they really need to go to work on themselves and redefine what sales is, redefine what sales means to the client and the prospective client. And so instead of thinking sales is something you do to somebody, sales is something that you actually do with a client uh, and you try to find uh, pr problems to solve. And so finding those problems to solve is a whole lot easier than thinking that you have to go out and sell some something to somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think it also starts at a really truly believing in what it is you're doing. If the person, if you're listening to this uh, call or this podcast, if you don't truly believe in your product or service, you're, 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 you either need to go to work on yourself to learn how to to find a way to believe in it. Uh, or you're, you're with the wrong company. Uh, so uh, think about that because if you, you know, to be, if you really believe in what it is you're selling, you're going to go to the market in a far more powerful uh, way uh, and attract those yeses to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, I, when I think about this as well, I, I think it, it's important to get to the root of why a a person's in a slump, especially if they're considering getting out of sales or changing careers, um, you know, which, which, and sales, you know, it's a hard job. It's not for everyone. So that might be the best thing for a person. You know, there, there's a lot of elements that go into a sale to being great at sales. And mm -hmm. some of them are, are, I, I believe almost all of them are learnable, but you know, but just because you could do it doesn't mean it's going to be something it's necessarily going to be a career that you enjoy. I mean, you know, I, I could be great at accounting, right? I could, you know, I could just be a fantastic accountant, but it's just not, not something that I enjoy because I'm too extroverted for it. I'm not detail or oriented enough for it, et cetera. Right. Yeah. Um, and the opposite could be true, for, you know, for sales, you could be, you know, uh, you just could, it could not be a good fit for your personality, even if you are pretty good at it and you're in a, sl a slump because it's just not a good fit for you. Now, right. conversely, the, the root of the, the slump could be the company that you're at. It could be the territory that you have. It could right. be. And so digging into that and figuring it out, like, why, why is this not going well, you know, and, and deciding is, is, this, is it me? Is it, you know, it's like being in a bad relationship. Is it me? Is it them? Who like, is it? Is it the situation? What's going on? And, and you know, and, and picking at that a little and, and trying to really being honest with yourself is is important there. Because if mm. you if you were great at sales three years ago and now you're in a slump, and it's like, well, what what's changed here? Well, I changed companies, and you know, no one's making quota at this company. And, I, and I've been in that situation too. I was at a company where I'd say about twenty percent of the reps were making quota. And uh, the OTE was high, and so you know they it was a cool opportunity, and so they they had a great team, but it was a hard product to sell, uh, mostly right. because it didn't work that well, frankly. And yes. and so it you know, and I've also been at a company where ninety percent of the reps were making quota, and frankly, quotas were probably being set a little too low at that company. Yeah. But everybody was just killing it. Like so, the people at the second company couldn't all say, "I'm doing great at sales. I should. I'm great at this. I don't have to learn anything." And <laughs> and the people at the first company, you know, it, it wouldn't be something that they, it wasn't their self confidence or self image or or some technical skill they needed to work on that was mm. putting them in a slump. Right. Um, where do you? Where do you think uh, where do you think reps should find inspiration if if they do look at the situation and say, "Yeah, it, I'm in a slump because it's 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 more this is more about me. I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, or I'm, I need to work on on these skills, or yeah. it's something about me. The guys are the guys and girls on the team around me are doing well. It, it you know, in my territory seems fine, but I'm just I'm not." getting enough deals over the, over the line here, or I'm yeah. not inspired to work hard. Like what, what, what tips do you have for someone who finds himself in that situation? Yeah. Well, I mean, so assuming you do believe in the product and the service or the, uh, or the company that you're a part of, uh, and, and you're not on fire. Like I, I really believe in this concept of ignorance on fire, meaning we're just, we're just acting very powerfully in the market. 
Uh, and I mean, I think at the end of the day, we need to be self-motivated uh, to go out there and do whatever it takes. And I guess from my vantage point, self-motivation looks like uh, the components of self-motivation is enthusiasm, it's persistence, it's physical energy, it's all of those things. It's being able to truly get in front of somebody and tell a good quality story that engages uh, your prospect. So self-motivation, the only thing that I have learned, um, and maybe let me just step back, the, the, there's really only two ways to change uh, when, when you kind of study psychology uh, and you look at people who have changed in the past, you know, the, and the change I'm suggesting is, you know, being a, a ball of energy in the market that's, uh, you know, that's, that's self-motivated and bringing a lot of energy. So if you want to become that, that's a change. So there's only two ways to change. One is through an emotional impact, meaning uh, you know, you are at a, at a point in your life where you really have to make it happen because maybe you're going about to go bankrupt, right? Your commission checks are dried up that bad. Um, on a health, uh, from a health vantage point, an emotional impact is a heart attack, uh, right? Uh, so an emotional impact, you wake up, you say, oh my God, I need to go out and actually make this happen. And you do that. So that's one way to change. The second way to change, which I would prefer anyone listening does, and, and I've uh, kind of been doing all the last 15 or 20 years, is uh, what, what I'm referring to as spaced repetition, meaning you take an ideal, you take a, a, a picture, you take a vision is probably the most, uh, the word I use more. You take a vision that, of how you want your life to look in the future and you write it out. And we've heard all about this, uh, but it's really, for me, it's, it's been, uh, I have reinvented my life a bunch of times by having a vision for what I want the next phase of my life to look like. And so it's me and my family doing the things that, uh, that I want to do in my life. And then I take that vision and I submerge myself in that vision by reading it to myself a couple of times a day, right? And by doing that and really and truly living inside the vision in the, those moments I'm reading them, uh, I notice my energy changes and I go out and I act powerfully to the market. And that spaced repetition of that new vision is what will create this higher level of self-motivation to get out there. And I don't want to make that sound too woo-woo because -woo, uh, uh, I, I think there's probably people listening who maybe consider that woo-woo. But I, I suggest anyone listening to try to prove me wrong that a vision that you're highly emotionally engaged in, uh, uh, that'll help uh, in terms of that self-motivation, which ultimately will help you uh, act more powerfully to the market. So I encourage anybody listening to write a vision for where they want to take their life, and that'll be the fuel for the fire, so to speak. And, and how do you go about doing that? Do you imagine where you want to be in five years, 10 years? Do you imagine yourself writing your own eulogy? What is the, what is the actual blocking and tackling around writing a vision? Yeah, great question. I mean, I, the process I have used for the last five or six years is every year uh, over Christmas, uh, I usually sit down with a pen and paper uh, in the quiet of my office or study uh, or out in nature and I just write down 30 or so things I would like to see happen in my life. So it would be 30 goals, effectively, that I'd like to see come into my life over the next uh, two to three to four years. And I don't really try to put a timeline on it as, as such. Uh, but it's kind of where I want to see my, the next version of my life, right? And so I write out those 30. And then I sit down with the 30. And I put them in three buckets, A, B, and C. And, uh, you know, based on priority and, and things I truly would love to see happen. And the A bucket, I then take each of the buckets and I group, I order them one to 10. So I end up with an A1 goal effectively. But through that 30 goals and I'll see themes. And uh, those themes are ultimately what I then take. And I, I create a story or a narrative in the present tense of what I want my life to look like. And I'd be happy to read mine to you uh, if you wanted me to. But, uh, but effectively, it's me uh, from, from my ver uh, version of a vision. It's me working kind of where and when I want. Uh, it's me traveling, enjoying time with my wife, uh, you know, and uh, my family coming to join us. 
you know, you mentioned I was a keynote speaker. I try to find the uh, talks uh, that I'm invited to uh, speak at in the mountains uh, where I love to spend some time. Uh, so I live in the northern climate, so I like to go down south in the winter, those types of things. And lo and behold, I've attracted that into my life, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question uh, of how I go about writing a vision. Yeah, it really does. It's uh, you know, it, it's a it's an interesting as you were describing it, it what it reminded me of um, was Warren Buffett's strategy, mm. uh, which is very different in that he says if you want to be successful in life, you write down your top twenty five goals, yeah, circle the three that are the most important to you. And then make sure you don't do any of the other ones. You just fo- <laughs> you just focus on on the top three because you know his his argument is that you can only do you know three things. You can't yeah. you can't and if you try to do all of your goals, you will inherently fail. Yeah, uh, and so. I, uh, just a thought on that though, I'd be willing, I, I agree with that. I've never read that as it pertains to Warren Buffett, but I'd be willing to bet what he's getting us to do there is he's suggesting we focus, but I'd be willing to bet 90 plus percent of the goals that you never focused on get achieved by focusing on those first three, mm. right? Uh, that'd be my, that'd be my thought. I, I find that with myself. If I read visions I wrote five years ago, or goals I wrote five years ago, but my vision is truly focusing on the top two or three, which is, which is I, I, I believe that. There's a lot of validity to that. Lo and behold, I've actually accomplished 90% of the goals I wrote out. Oh, interesting. Well, and, yeah. and maybe it is, it's based on the types of goals that we set for ourselves, right? Like, mm. you know, like if I, I would love to learn to be a helicopter pilot, but there are a lot of things that are more important to me. Yeah, you know, gr- point, growing. Yeah. There's there, you know, so there, I can think of 20 things that are more, what, that are more important to me and it would be really hard to become a helicopter pilot. I mean, a, a buddy of mine just, has just been going through getting his, he's now, he's now a regular pilot, um, you know, of, of little planes, but, uh, but being a helicopter pilot is way, way more difficult and way more intense, but even just the, just the little planes, um, has been really a, a very intense endeavor for him and, and a real time suck. And so I, I guess it probably depends what types of goals you're laying out and you, and you have to recognize, you know, if, you know, becoming a scratch golfer or learning to fly a helicopter or, or something like that, if that's one of your goals, that's great. But to be a scratch golfer, you got to be putting 20 hours a week, 30 hours a week into it. So yeah. you're going to be, com- you're going to be compromising other things if it's, if you've got really, you know, time, time intensive yeah. goals. Whereas if you're, if you wanted to set a goal of meditating for 10 minutes a day or eating at least one meal a day with your, with your wife or whatever, whatever the thing was that is more, a more reasonable to attain goal, then you probably can do 30 of them. So I guess it probably depends yeah. on what they are. Yeah. Th- I think it's, and it's also, there's some, maybe some nuances and I think you're, you're nailing it. Uh, there's, there's nuances to the definitions, right? So goals versus values versus purpose and so on uh, uh, is there's, there's nuances to the definition. I know for me, it's less about the specific things goals are not necessarily for me uh the specific things i want to do and achieve it's more the energy that i want to create in my life uh around myself and my my family the most important people in my life right mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. so uh i find if i focus on the energy that i want to create the vibe uh or so on uh and so on the, the that that everything else kind of percolates and i end up doing things that i truly love to do as a part of the process right uh mm-hmm. if that makes any sense yeah, no, it 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 does. What what would be a just so just to ground this? What would uh, what would be an example of a goal regarding the energy that you're trying to achieve in your life, or the values that you're trying to live? Yeah, I mean, for so I mean, family is my most important uh, element in my life. Uh, you know. Um, the I might write down a goal that I want to uh, uh, travel to California and spend some time in Los Angeles over the next couple of years uh, uh, with uh, with my family. Uh, so that's a specific goal. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's funny. Last week I gave a talk to a group in Atlanta, and sorry, sorry. And another goal might be I'm a huge hockey fan, 
And so on the way back from Los Angeles, I want to go see the Toronto Maple Leafs play the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, and so lo and behold, I wrote that down about a year ago. And lo and behold, last week I was in Atlanta and I spoke. Um, and on the way back, my wife and I and the children and my two kids, we met in Toronto and we got to see the Montreal Canadiens play the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, so very cool. now I, I tell you that, uh, mainly because, uh, how that felt for me was the equivalent of me going to, uh, California. So I, I might've wrote down a goal that mm -hmm. I want to go to California, but it's ultimately the experience. It's a, uh, and, and I don't think the place really mattered a whole lot. Does right, that make right. sense? Yeah, uh, I, I get what you're saying now. Yeah, so I, that's yeah. why I wanted to ground what you were saying. So it's like the, that makes, that, yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to have, have everyone understand what you were talking about there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so to relate this to back to field salespeople and, and their careers, um, I, I guess we were talking about self-image and confidence and, yeah. and how that can affect a sales slump. So. Mm -hmm why is self image and confidence important during a sales slump and and how can someone work to improve their self image and their confidence yeah yeah well i think vision plays a big part in that right uh having a vision for your future uh, uh that really compel is compelling and adds a lot of energy and juice uh, to your day uh so that you're out there really uh giving it your all uh, you know, when I talk to people and say, and I try to challenge them around certain aspects of sales and, and doing things that maybe uh, they're not used to doing, uh, you know, they'll say something along the lines of, I'll do it when I have uh, the capability, right? And the more we talk about it, the more I have them realize is that capability is really a reward for, for doing it, right? And then they'll say, well, uh, I, I'll do it when I have uh, the confidence. And then the more we talk about it, confidence is also a reward for doing it and falling down and picking yourself back up and so on. Um, and so the more we peel back the layers of the onion in the conversation, uh, it comes down to commitment and courage, right? So getting out there, staying true to yourself, committed to talking to a certain number of people per day or per week or whatever, and having the courage to go and just do it, right? I, I often say to people and to myself uh, that uh, to get the energy to do the thing, sometimes we just got to go out and do the thing. And so uh, I highly encourage anyone listening to uh, try to do something that scares you at least once a week uh, because it's that type of thing that'll, that'll get you out there uh, uh, doing more of the activities that are necessary in sales. Uh, but, you know, as it pertains to a sales slump, uh, uh, the thing that I find is I, I have a little formula that I learned from, uh, have you ever heard of the guy Maxwell Maltz? Uh, he wrote the book Psycho Cybernetics, a uh, mm -hmm. phenomenal mm -hmm. book. Uh, and his formula for uh, you know, attacking things uh, that are outside the comfort zone and, and can be, uh, you know, uh, result in a sales slump or a slump in life uh, is – Number one, uh, you know, reliving uh, past successes, you know, uh, finding ways to get yourself into the mindset that, hey, uh, uh, we, we're, we can all fall into sales slumps, but I'm going to beat a sales slump. Uh, so you do that by, and number first thing is recall and reliving uh, past successes because we've all had successes in our lives. Uh, and so relive those because that gets some positive energy flowing. Another thing that I suggest to people listening is uh, start your day off in, in by focusing on some high probability scenarios. So one of those things might be calling up on an existing client who you know is happy with your uh, with the results that they're getting, uh, uh, right? So uh, call up on those first, and hel that helps you kind of get in the uh, the zone, right? Um, another little tactic that I suggest is. Take a bit of time after you have uh, visited a prospect that might have said no and kind of let that frustration out. Uh, so relax a bit more uh, prior to calling up on a new prospect uh, because, uh, you know, there's no sense bringing that kind of bad energy, that negative energy into, the, into your next conversation, right? So taking time and relaxing and, and getting yourself back into a positive state uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is another good thing to do. And then I guess another idea is to make sure you're, you're reasoning uh, and looking at 
uh, you know, these circumstances that you're follow, you find yourself in, uh, reasoning uh, why, you know, that person you may be talking to, think about their current circumstances because, you know, while you think the, sell, the, the buying of your product or service is a priority for them, uh, it's, it's not necessarily always a priority for them or it may not be a priority. So make sure you, you don't beat yourself up because your prospect has said no today. Uh, you know, so use your, use your, uh, kind of higher mental faculty of reason, uh, so that you don't beat yourself up, you know? And uh, so these are some ideas as to how to get yourself out of the mindset that you're the problem because you may not be the problem at all. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, just try to get yourself into a better state for each day when you get out there and attack the market. I couldn't agree more. And, and you said something in there that, that really jumped out at me, you know, it, so a, a, a lot of people tend to just turn on themselves and say, Oh, this isn't going well because it's my fault or because, you know, they, 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 they blame themselves personally when really it just might be a habit that you have or yeah. a set of actions that you are taking or not taking. And you brought up business development. Um, I think a lot of sales slumps come from not having another, not having enough high probability mm -hmm. deals in your pipeline, not, not Absolutely. dedicating the time to develop business coming down the pipe. It's very easy to, you know, for example, if a sales rep is managing both existing customers and, and prospect cust prospective customers, it's very easy to spend all your time with existing customers, making sure they're hand like happy servicing them, making sure yeah. their next deal is going to come through. And it's easy to neglect or have fall down lower on the priority list, um, your pipeline and, and new business development. Absolutely. How can, how can a salesperson um, break out of a slump that, well, first, how, how about if a salesperson identify that the problem, it may be a lack of, of high quality pipeline. And then how, what do you, do you have any recommendations for how a salesperson can break out of a slump that's caused by a lack of business development or a lack of high quality pipeline? Yeah, great question. I love it. I love the framing. Um, you know, it's uh, really all about scheduling the time. Uh, what I have uh, learned through working with, uh, you know, clients is that the majority of people actually don't schedule business development activities uh, on a consistent basis. So what I suggest, if you're listening, uh, and, you, and think about this suggestion through your own lens, because uh, you may think uh, this, just, this doesn't apply to me, I suggest you listen to what I'm gonna suggest and figure out how it can apply to you. Um, every week, 9 a.m., Monday morning, schedule two hours of business development activities where you're, where you're lining up opportunities uh, to flesh out in the upcoming week. So, so this coming Monday, schedule your time to, to schedule to get the business development in your in your calendar for the next week. If you need seven meetings to close uh, two or three deals, then uh, then schedule nine because there's going to be a few that are going to fall off, right? Uh, but getting business development in your schedule first before uh, any other activity uh, is a guaranteed way to ensure consistency. Uh, I was talking to someone just an, uh, an hour ago um, and they're struggling right now with uh, three months of lackluster results. And I asked the question, well, what were you, as I got a bit of an, a better understanding of their sales, uh, kind of the time, the time it takes to close deals. I asked them, tell me, think back to what you were doing last June uh, and what was happening last June. Oh, lo and behold, she, uh, he, uh, he had a death in the family and he never got the focus as, uh, as much effort, right? So he's seeing the results, the poor results over the last three months of his, of his uh, low uh, schedule time last June, July, right? So schedule business development first, plan out your uh, week ahead, and then get, after you uh, line up that time and, and, and schedule everything for the upcoming week, get to work on doing what you said you were going to do in the previous Monday, right? So get it into the calendar first and I guarantee you uh, it'll become a priority. What I have learned is that if you don't have it scheduled, 
the first thing that comes uh, off the calendar as you get fires entering your week is business development because mm -hmm. business development, uh, uh, unless you're a natural at it, it's something that can be a little uncomfortable at times. So the first things that come off your calendar are the things that are, uh, are uncomfortable. But if you, if you schedule them, uh, then it's a little bit harder. I also recommend uh, buddying up and have, having maybe an accountability of, uh, approach to all of this, you know, uh, where you have somebody who's holding your feet to the fire and, uh, you know, on a weekly basis. It could be an informal accountability partner, but uh, a formal accountability partner is even better where that accountability partner is bringing some new ideas to the table, getting you to think a little bit differently, uh, asking, uh, you know, uh, how did you do last week? Did you do what you said you were going to do? Why didn't you? Uh, and those types of things. So accountability is really important. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. this, this reminds me of, uh, uh, I just flew out to uh, visit one of our customers in, uh, in Chicago and um, I was, I was coaching their team kind of in a training session around the, you know, they were kind of, they, they they were starting to use our product and we're kind of launching with their company. And we, so we often go out and like interact with the company, um, sometimes over the phone, sometimes in person, depending on the size of the team, I guess. Um, and so I was out there, uh, meeting with these guys and, and training them. And, and I was, I was coaching their, them to, at the, at the start of every week look at your your scheduled routes that you've that you've built out for the week right so you you know uh, you know uh, so in 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 badger you kind of can build out your your routes for the week right so monday tuesday wednesday and a lot of times they have holes in them right it's like oh thursday i've got this meeting over here and i've got that meeting over there um and and my coaching was to always be one week out so i'll like mm -hmm. you know so this Tuesday, look at next Tuesday and look at next Tuesday's saved route that you already have and ask yourself, okay, well, I've got, this is the, this, these are kind of the anchor meetings I have scheduled right now. Let mm -hmm. me look at the route that I, and kind of see who are prospects that I can, that I can swing by or ask, you know, let them know I'll be in the neighborhood via an email, let them know, Hey, I, I'd, I'd like to interact with you. I'm going to be in town in town or in the neighborhood next Tuesday be great if I could sw swing by it around this time. But doing that always a week out and building out your, based on, ge you know, geographically being, you know, looking where you're, based on where you're going to be can be a really powerful way if you're always just, you know, you spend 10 minutes a day on that and, and you, you'll get a lot more um, high quality meetings with, with uh, high quality prospects that are right on your way anyway um, yeah. when you're in the field. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, so that's a, a little tip that that jumps out at me on how to how to do this type of planned out business development and and actually schedule out the time to to do that business development. Yeah, really. yeah, and I think it's very important to uh, always be have a little bit of time every week focused at right at the top of the funnel, right, and that's so that you have good fresh uh, opportunities flowing through at all times. Uh, and uh, I encourage you, anybody listening, to make sure that's that's at least done once a week, uh, so that you don't see downtime in the funnel at all, right? Um, and open yourself up. I mean, be a hub for. I don't want, and I know, and I don't want to spread ourselves too wide in this conversation. But I, I, I take the mindset of uh, being a hub for your network. Uh, so uh, always be thinking about who you know. That might be might, that might benefit from knowing other people in your network and so on. So that if you're a hub for your network, you're getting uh, new opportunities introduced to you at all times because you end up having a whole pile of ambassadors out there in the market uh, who are looking out for opportunities for you. Uh, this whole idea of reciprocity, uh, you know, if you do something for somebody, they're going to feel uh, an obligation, a subconscious obligation to pay back. Uh, so by by doing that, uh, you just have a uh, this fledging um, network of contacts who are looking out for you. And, and, and I think that involves a mindset of service and giving first, you know? Uh, so uh, yeah, I think it's, I think when you really peel back the layers of the onion, we have a tendency to overcomplicate all this in our minds, right? Um, if we have the attitude of, of service and wanting to give to our, our networks, growing our networks, uh, and then, I mean, from my vantage point, all, all revenue in all business grows through relationships. So we should be every week trying to find ways to have conversations with people, uh, so that we're giving and serving and building relationships. 
it's uh, great advice. What, uh, what thoughts do you have for, for the people who are our listeners who, um, who are managers of, of a sales rep in a slump? A lot of our listeners are either managers of field sales teams or VPs of sales of uh, field sales teams, or they're salespeople who one day want to build their, want to build their managerial skills to one day be sales managers. Um, what, what advice do you have for people that are in a managerial role over someone over a rep that's in a sales slump? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, a manager is, uh, if you're an effective manager, you are effective at, at uh, helping that individual uh, become, uh, grow uh, as a person, right? So you are in a role where you are effectively mentoring that individual. And so if you're looking at your job as a manager, purely through the lens of growing revenue solely, uh, everyone who's working for you are human beings uh, first, right? And so going back to this message of, uh, you know, everyone, we all have an ability to level up in our lives through uh, tapping into this energy of wanting to be something better than tomorrow than we are today. Uh, we should, as managers, be facilitators uh, for that, right? So I would be encouraging any manager listening to truly get to know your sales rep uh, on the inside and know what makes them tick, know what they want out of their futures uh, and so on and stimulate them to think bigger. Right. And so take this idea that I've thrown out here today around vision and encourage your sales reps to create visions for their lives that, that are completely business and growing the business is a part of their lives, but it isn't their lives. Uh, they, they're doing this all. It's a means to an end to some extent, right? So, so you want to position your, the growth of your business uh, in such a way that them achieving the life they want to, they want to live uh, is, is benefiting the business, right? So I would encourage any manager listening to really figure out how to motivate through a vision and, and creating something for a life they're happy to be living type of thing. Fantastic. So um, we brought up consistency uh, and, and how important uh, consistency and revenue flow uh, predictability is for, for a rep to have strong performance over a career and to stay out of slumps. Um, what are your thoughts around consistency in revenue and, and how can a rep attain that? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think we have touched on it uh, a little bit throughout uh, around scheduling time and, and so on. Uh, but, you know, consistency from my vantage point is uh, always being, always thinking three, four, six months out uh, and uh, building and filling up that funnel with new people who you're meeting. And I would encourage anyone listening to uh, be always thinking about ways to be unique in the marketplace. Uh, you know, I believe in growing a personal brand and uh, giving, giving to the community in such a way that people stand up and take notice, right? Uh, so for me, uh, writing my book was a, definitely a, a huge piece of the puzzle for me uh, and when I wrote my book and started my podcast and so on, my business, and so I grew, I grew an IT consulting company and sold it to KPMG in 2013. Um, KPMG got immense benefit from me uh, be growing my per. Did we lose? Did, did we lose you, Chris? Can you hear me? Chris, you there? Hmm. Yeah, I can see him, but he's frozen on the screen. Oh, there you are. Don't, no worries. We, we'll just cut that part out. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we need to go back to the start of that question, maybe. The consistency? Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I, I finished up saying, what are your thoughts around consistency? Yeah, yeah. So I just jump right back in? 
and start yeah. over. Yeah, we'll just we'll just we'll blur those. We'll 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 blur Mike. We'll connect my question to your answer, and you can just start start your answer on why consistency and revenue flow is, is so important for sales reps. So can you ask that question? Yeah, and I'm going. And sorry, I, I know we're I know we're recording. We can cut out with this. I I I've covered a good bit of that already, to be honest with you. But I okay. don't know if we want to frame up a question around uh, uh, and I. So I went down the path of just creating this environment where uh, we become known for something, right? And and uh, mm -hmm. if you're cool, I can continue down that path. Okay. Um, if you've already covered it, I can also just jump into the next questions too. Yeah, let's do that. Let's right. do that. I don't think the idea of personal branding is, uh, uh, which I do, I do a lot of work on, but I don't think mm -hmm. that's a theme we want to be really promoting as such on this on this one. Okay, out of scope. Yeah, no, that makes sense. All right. Well, then. Uh, I'll just jump back in. I'll just can. We'll, we'll cut it at the end of the last thing you said. Sure. We'll cut that question, and then we'll 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 just start from here. Wonderful. All right. Well, the next uh, section of the show is sales in sixty seconds. This is where we ask you a series of uh, shorter questions with uh, sixty second or less answers. You ready? Let's do it. All right. So, um, are there things that a salesperson who is in a sales slump should avoid? Uh, great question. Uh, I would avoid uh, bringing uh, the negative energy out into the market from one call, one sales meeting, sales conversation to the next, right? Uh, it's so easy to uh, tap into that negative energy and then bring it into the next conversation. And that ends up, uh, again, going back to some of the things we talked about earlier, uh, it ends up getting into this cycle uh, that we don't want to have, right? Uh, so the idea of relaxing in between conversations and rationalizing a little bit uh, what's going, what actually is happening and taking an objective view to it is an important thing. So uh, I would avoid that for sure. Can you, uh, can you think of one essential habit or trait that leads to greater success in sales? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I would suggest a, a, habit or, a habit in sales is uh, looking, looking into the future and uh, get, falling in love with the future uh, because that ultimately is what will lead to that self-motivation we talked about earlier in the show. So forward-looking uh, and listening first uh, is another thing that comes to mind. Uh, because, and I've heard, I'm sure many people have talked about that on your show before, asking powerful diagnostic questions and then listening to the answers is, uh, is so important versus this ability, this uh, belief that we have to be as salespeople doing all the talking uh, because we think that's what's going to be attractive to the people who are listening to us. So true. Do you, do you recommend any tools or resources for salespeople to help them get out of a slump? Uh, the, I would uh, suggest uh, anyone listening, they, need to they should fall in love with psychology. Uh, sales is a, is a lot of psychology around decision making, uh, and there's so many aspects to this. I mean, when you're face to face with a prospect, the way you, you, you use body language, uh, that shows interest that, it, that cr it's all about increasing the energy, uh, uh within the conversation. And so studying psychology, there's a really good book. I recommend the science of say, selling, uh, that, uh, will touch on some of that body language stuff. Uh, so use psychology to your advantage because uh, sales is really all about psychology. Yeah, a book that I've always loved on sales psychology is uh, that book by Cialdini. Um, oh, yeah, Robert Cialdini. Yeah, yeah. Influence. Um, yeah, Influence. Fantastic book. I, I, uh, I read that 15 years ago and it definitely yeah. had an impact on me. I'd, I'd recommend that one to everyone. Absolutely. Um, is there, uh, are, are there any other books that you think every salesperson should watch or, or could yeah. learn from or should read or, or could uh, learn from? Yeah, no, great question. Uh, I, uh, a book that's very unknown uh, from uh, my experience, but has had a huge impact on me is a book by the, uh, an author by the name of Price Pritchard. Uh, he owns a company called Pritchard LLC. Um, and he wrote a book called U Squared, uh, The Quantum Leap Formula. And, uh, you know, the, the basis of the book is that we are all molecular structures. We are all, we're atoms and atoms have an ability to, uh, to go from point A to point Z 
and skip every step in between. Uh, so, so the idea that we are atoms, uh, the idea, and quantum physics is the basis of a lot of this, but uh, we have this ability to reinvent ourselves at any given point in time and truly wake up tomorrow morning and be something completely different than we, are, we were before we went to bed, right? And so this book is a formula for effectively how to do that. Instead, instead of making incremental gains in our lives, uh, truly reinvent ourselves and uh, get up tomorrow morning and be something completely wildly, different, wildly more successful and different. Excellent. I think it was Joni Mitchell that said, we are stardust. You got <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so what, what is your best piece of advice that, uh, and she's, she's Canadian, just like you, right? She is, yes. That's right. Yeah. Um, other side of the country, though. You're in Newfoundland? Yeah, I'm in Newfoundland. I think she's she over was, in Vancouver I, somewhere. Yeah, I, I think she's from like the middle, like Oh, okay, Ontario, Alberta, or something. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, no, that's that's over west. That's, that's out west. Yeah, yeah, way west. Um, yeah. But uh, so, what is your best piece of advice that you want the outside salespeople today to remember? Best pieces of success, uh, and I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. Uh, but uh, uh, sit down, um, take a bit of time, think about what your future you want your future to look like. Um, really put a narrative behind it. Uh, we think in pictures. Uh, uh, so when I say the word refrigerator, your brain likely went right into your house and it, you're seeing on the screen of your mind a picture of your refrigerator just like you were sitting down in front of it. And so what we want to do is we want to create a picture for our future that, uh, that hits all the senses. And because when we read it, uh, we truly get emotionally engaged in that vision, uh, that picture. And uh, that's what ultimately helps us act powerfully in the market. And, uh, uh, you know, and I would also suggest building into that vision, approaching your craft, your profession uh, from, a, from the vantage point of service and truly helping your clients uh, versus a bunch of money, bags of money uh, type of thing. You know, service, if you approach it with service first, uh, the money will come. Absolutely. And, and as a final takeaway, what should the field salespeople listening today do as a first step to get out of a sales slump? Should they find themselves in one? Yeah, get out there and, and just start talking to people with a, with a bit of a new perspective. Uh, loosen up a little bit. Uh, don't, be, don't be telling yourself you're in a slump. Uh, and uh, just get out there and, and try your hardest to uh, put all that to bed and just be something a bit different tomorrow uh, because uh, you, you, your prospects will feel that and uh, you know, you'll be that much more closer to success. Great advice. Well, I'm going to attempt to summarize all the topics we've talked about today in a minute or two here, just for everyone driving and everything. Um, so a sales slump is when salespeople think they're doing the necessary steps to close deals and set themselves up for success, but they keep hitting roadblocks. This is problematic because you keep going to bed with a, a bad mindset, a negative mindset, and it can be a never ending cycle if you, if you don't do something about uh, the slump that you're in uh, to get out of it. A sales slump is how, it's, it, a sales slump is all about how we react. It, it can be impacted by your life experiences that have nothing to do with your sales role. And you have to be on the lookout for that. Salespeople need to work on themselves and strive towards change to get back to being successful in sales. You can either change through a big emotional impact where you've reached a point where you can't go on without changing. So the change is kind of forced or you can proactively change by focusing in on of the vision for what you want this your next phase of life to look like sit down and write it down and and read out this new vision to yourself several times a day keep revisiting and focusing on on where you want to be going and then you can that helps you take the steps to you know on a day-to-day -day basis to actually get there it helps motivate and helps clarify things uh, Chris for example sits down every year around Christmas time and writes down 30 goals for the coming year. 
he then ranks those goals and looks for themes within those goals. These goals can be a mix of work and personal life. And you can focus your priorities in the top rated goals. He does that by breaking, breaking the goals into three groups, uh, goal A, B, and C goals, and then, and then stack ranking those within, within uh, each, each bucket. So it really helps you focus in on what's most important to you. Having a vision for your future helps salespeople that, you know, helps them drive, helps them have drive and motivation during, during each day that they're out there selling, helps them keep moving forward. If you're not in a good mindset, you can get into a good mindset by recalling and reliving past successes, and that can be very energizing. Starting your day with positive activities to get you in a, a great mental zone. Um, allow yourself to have a break and relax after bad sales meetings and get back into a good mindset. And, uh, and, and, and not beating yourself up when a prospect says no today. Understand that you might not be the problem. It might be something going on with them. It might be their, their situation. And if you, get, if you find yourself in a, in, a, in a difficult situation, don't always assume that it's you that's the problem. Um, avoid falling into sales slumps by scheduling enough time for business development activities. Really make lead generation and building out your pipeline a priority. Schedule at least two hours on Monday morning to get your business development appointments on your calendar for the next week. And by actually scheduling that time, um, you, it really gets done. Or you can schedule lots of short period, uh, times for, for business development that are kind of throughout the day or throughout the week and, and bite it off a little, bit of, a little bit at a time, depending on what works best for you. You can buddy up with a colleague or a friend to make sure you share your schedule with someone that you can helps you really hold yourself accountable and, and you can hold them accountable. From the sales manager perspective, as a sales manager, you can help salespeople who are on your team get out of a slump by getting to know each rep better and understanding what they really care about. Um, encouraging your reps to create a vision for their lives so they can be motivated towards their goals will also be really helpful. So Chris, this has been really insightful and really helpful, I think, to a ton of people out there who um, find themselves in a sales slump or, or, or just want to improve. Uh, where can listeners read more about your work? Um, where can they re reach out to you? What's the best way to to get to know get to know you keep the conversation going etc yeah um chris spurvey.com is my website uh i'll spell my last name s-p-u-r-v-e-y.com and uh so chris spurvey.com uh, linkedin is the social network i kind of hang out on the most uh, so a lot of my articles and podcasts and so on uh, get posted there uh, and I guess if anyone would like to have a conversation, one of the things like we focused on a sales slump in this conversation, but uh, one of the things I, I really do in my consulting practice is I uh, grow a, a culture of sales within an organization. Uh, so what that typically looks like is I help organizations tap into the goodwill uh, and the, uh, the goodwill and relationships of everybody in the organization. So we talked about pipeline earlier. Uh, you know, imagine if we had the CEO, the accountant, the, the janitor, and so on, everyone involved in being ambassadors for the company, and they're all out there, and they're talking to people uh, like they would be anyway, and they just are looking at opportunities through a bit of a different lens, which ultimately fuels more things into the funnel. Uh, so that's the type of work I do in my consulting practice. Uh, so feel free. I'd love to have a conversation if that sounds in any way interesting. Uh, then let's have a conversation. You can reach out to me over, through my website and we can kind of take it from there. Sounds good. Well, this has been a great episode of the Outside Sales Talk. If you can think of any sales reps who, who find themselves in a sales slump or could use some motivation, um, share the love and forward this uh, podcast on to them and, and maybe, that'll, maybe it'll help them out. Take care until next time, guys. Bye.